Then Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, could I ask you to please stand and those seated at the front of the memorial to turn and face Anzac Parade for the march past of the veterans of the Battle of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral. Our veterans are approaching from the Australian War Memorial end of Anzac Parade.
Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge our veterans of the battles of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral. Gentlemen, thank you for your service. Please fall out and take your seats. Thank you. Ladies and gentlemen, Please be seated.
Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. Welcome to the Australian Vietnam Forces National Memorial on Anzac Parade, Canberra, for the commemorative service to mark the 50th anniversary of the Battle of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral. I'm Major General Mark Kelly, the Repatriation Commissioner at the Department of Veterans Affairs and the Colonel Commandant of the Royal Australian Regiment. And it is my great privilege to be the Master of Ceremonies for this morning's service. I would like to begin by acknowledging the traditional owners of the land on which we meet, the Ngunnawal people, and pay my respects to their elders past and present. And I extend that respect to all Aboriginal and Torres Strait Islander Australians who are present here today. I will now broadly acknowledge our official guests. The Honourable Darren Chester MP, the Minister for Veterans Affairs, the Minister for Defence Personnel and the Minister assisting the Prime Minister for the Centenary of Anzac. The Honourable Amanda Rishworth MP, the Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs, the Shadow Minister for Defence Personnel and the Shadow Minister for Early Childhood Education and Development. Air Chief Marshal Mark Binskin AC, the Chief of Defence Force. Lieutenant General Angus Campbell, AODSC, the Chief of Army. Air Marshal Leo Davies, AOCSC, the Chief of Air Force. Commodore Stephen Hughes, CSC, RAN, representing the Chief of Navy. Ms Liz Cosson, AMCSC, the Acting Secretary of the Department of Veterans Affairs. General Sir Philip Bennett, AC, KBE, DSO, the Commanding Officer of the 1st Battalion during the Battle of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral. Dr Brendan Nelson, AO, the Director of the Australian War Memorial. Senior representatives of the ex-service organisations, veterans, other distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen. I would now like to especially acknowledge the VIPs for today's service, the veterans of the Battle of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral, and the family members of the 26 servicemen who were killed in action during the battle who are with us here today. Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge the service and sacrifice of these veterans, the families of those that we lost, and all those who served with them. Our service today begins with the mounting of the catafalque party. The catafalque party will lead to the memorial, the regimental colours, standard, guidon and corps banners of the Australian Army units involved in the battles of fire support base Coral and Balmoral. Ladies and gentlemen, please stand. If our official guests at the front of the memorial could please turn and face Anzac Parade. We have the arrival of the standard of the 1st Armoured Regiment, 
the guidon of the 3rd 4th Cavalry Regiment, the Sovereign's banner of the Royal Australian Engineers, the Queen Elizabeth II banner of the Royal Regiment of Australian Artillery, the colours of the 1st Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, and the colours of the 3rd Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment. Please be seated. I now invite Lieutenant General Angus Campbell, AODSC, the Chief of Army, to deliver the call to remembrance. The first Australian troops deployed to South Vietnam in 1962. The last combat troops left in 1973. Over the course of that decade, our country's commitment grew from a small group of military trainers to a battalion and then to a task force. The war in Vietnam was our country's most significant military deployment of the second half of the 20th century. And it came to dominate Australia's military and political landscape. For many of the men and women who served, the Vietnam War was and remains one of the most profound episodes of their lives. Every branch of Australia's armed forces was involved. Through 10 years of war, Australians fought hundreds of actions in Vietnam. When Australians remember Vietnam, 
One name, Long Tan, most readily comes to mind. But for people outside our country, and for many who serve, the Tet Offensive of January 1968 was the war's most dramatic moment. In the months that followed Tet, thousands of North Vietnamese troops passed through staging areas in Binh Hoa province on the way to launching fresh attacks on Saigon. In May 1968, Australian troops began landing in their midst. First, to establish fire support base Coral, and a few days later, fire support base Balmoral. They thought they would encounter exhausted survivors of recent fighting. Yet the battles over the following three weeks were among Australia's hardest of the war. One officer later said, the scale and tempo of operations was the highest mounted by the task force during the Australian involvement in South Vietnam. 26 Australians lost their lives at Coral and Balmoral. It was a difficult, concentrated period of fighting, but it was also several weeks in a very long conflict. Those who served through different periods of the war will remember other engagements from the labyrinth of channels at Chu Chi to the streets and homes of Bin Ba, the ambush on Operation Bribey and the bitter fighting of Overlord. Many will remember the deadly danger of landmines, the tension of patrolling and the encounters that may still play on veterans' minds but which are largely fought outside the circle largely forgotten outside the circle of those who served. Over 10 years of war, the Australians who served in Vietnam wrote their own distinguished chapter in the Anzac story. Today, as we gather to commemorate the anniversary of the Battle of Fire Support Bases Coral and Balmoral, we look back over the years since the war we remember all of the Australians who lost their lives in Vietnam. We acknowledge the deep wounds suffered by many who survived and the price that they and their families have paid for that service in the decades since they came home. Thank you, Chief of Army. The commemorative address today will be delivered by the Honourable Darren Chester MP, the Minister for Veterans Affairs, the Minister for Defence Personnel and a Minister assisting the Prime Minister for the centenary of ANZAC. Well, thank you, Mark. It's a great honour to be here with you today. Can I recognise my parliamentary colleague, Amanda Rishworth? I'd also like to recognise the former Deputy Prime Minister, but more importantly, Vietnam veteran, Tim Fisher, who's with us today. Distinguished guests. Thank you. Distinguished guests, ladies and gentlemen, but perhaps most importantly, as Mark said earlier, to the veterans and their families who are with us. Thank you so much for your service. And to all those who stand here in uniform today, thank you for your service and you should be proud of what you do. You, you should be proud of what you do to keep our nation safe. Today is a very special occasion as we commemorate the 50th anniversary of fire support bases Coral and Balmoral. But first things first, and without any further delay whatsoever, today I am extremely pleased to formally acknowledge the extraordinary gallantry displayed by members of the 1st Australia Task Force Forward and associated units deployed to areas of operations surfers 
during the battles of fire support bases Coral and Balmoral and have the great pleasure to announce His Excellency the Governor-General's approval to award the unit citation for gallantry for these actions. And if you'll indulge me, I'll repeat that. Have the great pleasure to announce His Excellency the Governor-General's approval to award the unit citation for gallantry for these actions. It has been a long time coming. And in many ways, perhaps I should be awarding a medal for persistence today as well. But can I please acknowledge the work of my predecessor, Dan Tehan, and also the work of the Defence Honours and Awards Appeals Tribunal, which reported to the government only a matter of weeks ago. Ladies and gentlemen, 50 years ago, Australians fought their longest and most costly battle of the Vietnam War at fire support bases, Coral and Balmoral. The Australian Task Force Commander called the battles some of the, some of the heaviest fighting that the task force ever undertook. Australian troops moved into the area of operations known as Bondi in Binh Hoa province on the 12th of May 1968 and began setting up the fire support base Coral. They didn't know how strong the enemy presence in the, in the area was going to be until a devastating attack fell upon them less than 12 hours later. In that first action, nine Australians were killed and the artillery and mortar men were the hardest hit. The North Vietnamese and Viet Cong could not tolerate the Australian presence across the route that they were using to attack Saigon. And over the next 16 days, North Vietnamese troops launched another determined attack against Coral and twice attempted to drive the Australians from the nearby fire support base Balmoral. A man dazed by an exploding mortar shell in the first attack on Balmoral remembered his thoughts as enemy troops launched their second assault on the base. I was an innocent country boy from Australia. Now I found myself on the brink of madness. Everywhere else at Balmoral, sorry, everybody else at Balmoral must have been feeling the same terror I was feeling. Coral and Balmoral were too strongly defended to fall to the waves of infantry sent against them. But for the men who faced these attacks, the fighting was intense, close and terrifying. Outside the two bases, infantry patrols had many contacts with North Vietnamese troops. On one day, nine such encounters left three Australian and 12 North Vietnamese soldiers dead. Australian tanks and infantry fought several fierce battles in the midst of heavily defended enemy bunker complexes as the toll of dead on both sides rose. By early June, after suffering devastating losses, the North Vietnamese conceded this route to Saigon and the last Australians left the area on the 6th. As we heard earlier, 26 Australians lost their lives in three and a half weeks at Coral and Balmoral. Almost 100 were wounded, at least 270 Vietnamese were killed, although we'll never know the true figure. The battles of fire support bases Coral and Balmoral are not widely known in Australia, yet they are among the most important of our country's long commitment to the war in Vietnam. The unit's citation for gallantry that I just announced is richly deserved. In the words of the Honours and Awards Appeals Tribunal report, the citation is for everyone who was there. The battle honour Coral Balmoral is shared by the 1st and 3rd Battalions, the Royal Australian Regiment, the 1st Armoured Regiment and the 3rd Cavalry Regiment. The Royal Australian Artillery 102 Field Battery received the honour title Coral in 2008, the year of the battle's 40th anniversary. Ladies and gentlemen, today we remember all those who fell in this distant corner of South Vietnam. We honour all those veterans who are here with us today and we acknowledge those who could not be here. For all those who served at Coral and Balmoral, you earned a proud place in Australia's rich military history, lest we forget. Thank you, Minister. The unit citation for gallantry, for extraordinary gallantry in the action at the Battle of Fire Support Bases Coral and Balmoral, has been awarded to the following Australian Army units. The 1st Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, the 3rd Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, 
A Squadron, 3rd Cavalry Regiment, C Squadron, 1st Armoured Regiment, 12th Field Regiment, Royal Regiment of Australian Artillery, and the 1st Field Squadron, Royal Australian Engineers. I now invite Lieutenant General Angus Campbell, AODSC, Chief of Army, and Warren Officer Don Spinks, OAM, the Regimental Sergeant Major of the Army, to move forward to receive the unit citation for gallantry streamers on behalf of the units and affix these streamers on the regimental colours, standards and guidons and the core banners of the units involved. Would the VIP guests at the front of the memorial please stand and face Anzac Parade for this presentation ceremony. The Chief of Army will affix the streamer to the regimental colour of the 1st Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, the regimental colour of the 3rd Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, and the Sovereign's Banner of the Royal Australian Engineers. The Regimental Sergeant Major of the Army will affix the streamer to the standard of the 1st Armoured Regiment, the Guidon of the 3rd Cavalry Regiment, and the Queen Elizabeth II Banner of the Royal Regiment of Australian Artillery. Ladies and gentlemen, please acknowledge the award of the unit citation for gallantry to the Australian Army units that fought in the Battle of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral 50 years ago. If I could ask you all to please stand and join the Royal Military College Band as we sing the hymn, O Valiant Hearts.
Please be seated. I now invite Mr Gary Cooper, the brother of Private Alan John Cooper of the 3rd Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, who was killed in action on the 26th of May 1968, to share his story as a family member who lost a brother. Thank you. This is a, a personal reflection by a next of kin. My name is Gary Cooper, who's introduced, at, and I am the brother of Alan. Three Ra, A Company, two platoon, and a little bit before in one platoon. In 2008, I was privileged and honoured to be in Canberra here with my brother Don, who is also with me here today, for the 40th anniversary of the Battle of Coral and Balmoral. For the first time, I met with some of Alan's fellow soldiers and officers. I thank those men who told me about Alan and the high regard that he was held in by them. To hear his soldier mates that have come out of the darkness of hell so many years later and talk about the war and Alan was very gratifying and emotional. Alan's story has been told many times. At the last post ceremony at the National War Memorial in May 2013, which was the 45th anniversary, this story was mainly about the battle and how Alan died. On January the 11th of this year, another last post ceremony spoke more in detail about Alan's life before joining up. Life in the early part of training, then being posted to three Ra and more intense work, and then his embarkation to Vietnam. They told they are what happened on arrival in Vietnam on the 27th of December through to the 26th of May when Alan was killed. I watched this live and it was a tribute to be very proud of. His story lives on also at reunions, other commemorations, memorial sites, museums, books, and other resources. My story. My story is not about the battle or how he died, but what it was like for me as his brother. When Alan enlisted in 1965 and came home and told the family I was away at the time. I'm, I am unsure how the news was received by the family as it was not spoken about at the time. It was my feeling the family was in deep shock. I feel there was anger that here was a young lad who volunteered to enlist in the army at a time of many Vietnam War issues. It was said that Alan wanted to do more with his life. And I believe Alan was out to prove that he could be someone better than what others thought of him. My wife's brother was already in Vietnam with the 5th Battalion. Several friends also had brothers who enlisted or were called up, and we dreaded hearing any reports of their involvement. 
The news of soldiers being killed or wounded impacted many families. And then we had to face Alan going to war. I missed Alan's embarkation on HMAS Sydney from Adelaide on December the 16th, 1967, due to work commitments. The event was covered by live television and Alan and Mum were interviewed. Looking back at photos and talking to those at present, it appeared as a time of excitement and celebration with all the hugs and smiles being displayed. Our boys were off to war and they'll be back before you know it. I feel these were nervous smiles, smiles hiding the fear that deep down we knew the possibility of never seeing them again. I treasure a photo of Alan and Mum both smiling and happy being interviewed prior to boarding. This was their last time together. Staying in contact. While posted in Australia, Alan did come home a few times on leave. Whilst away on duty, writing letters was the norm then. Once deployed to Vietnam, our main correspondence was through letters. Family and friends, however, did send over care packages and Alan also sent gifts home such as dolls, cigarette lighters and other items. Only recently I have discovered some of these letters and was able to read them for the first time. The very first mail he posted to Mum and Dad was a postcard of HMAS Sydney. And on the back he wrote, Dear Mum and Dad, When I get to WA I'll be posting this. We are afloat six hours out from Adelaide and the lot are starting to feel a bit sick and that goes for me too. Hope you like the film star. Well Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. Love, Alan. Alan's letters told of how he loved to talk about family, friends, his car, football, how everybody was and what was happening. He also thanked everyone for the parcels and boxes of supplies, things from home, gifts, food, wine and beer. Details of tours of duty and his fellow soldiers, interactions with officers and command. His words of what he saw and experienced was daunting to read. In a personal letter I received at the time, Alan wrote to me saying he wanted me to wait to get married until he came home because he was going to be in my wedding. Smiley. People asked me why Alan was called Smiley. He was always smiling and I think it was a girlfriend that called him Smiley. But Alan wrote in one of his letters to Mum and Dad in early May of 68 just before his birthday. I was wet from head to toe and not very happy. Not happy at all. But everyone around me calls me happy. As I've always got a smile, a mile wide on my face. When they ask me what I'm happy about, just say, 
you can't live life if you're not. And you have to keep smiling even though you are not happy sometimes. You see, I'm not coming home a nervous wreck and quick-tempered. Alan's attitude for life and his compassionate nature made him a real gentle guy, loved by all. I'm proud of, I'm so proud of him, but had he lived, how and what would he be today? What resonates with me now 50 years on is just how much Alan is respected and held in high regard by all. My memories of Alan's time in Vietnam are varied and not always clear. It is said that war and the loss of a loved one destroys families. Alan's death has had a dramatic impact throughout our family. When deaths occur, Feelings such as guilt, shame, remorse, bitterness and anger can grip those left behind. However, others can be left with happier memories of respect, love and forgiveness and be at peace. Having given his life to his nation at such an early age, like many, so many before him, what a coincidence it was that Alan and his mate William, Bill, or some known as Lofty Thomas, were both killed on the morning of May 26, 1968. Alan was killed at Balmoral by mortar shrapnel and William killed at Coral by mortar shrapnel. Alan's remains were flown home. He was home at last. Now the pain is real. Alan was given a funeral with full military honours on June the 4th, 1968. The funeral was carried out on a very stormy, wet and windy day. A newspaper article describes this moment. It was a very emotional and gut-wrenching day, especially when the heavens opened up and burst into tears as the buglers sounded the last post. Elderly men and women wept. Teenagers cried and others fainted. Today, there are many resources available on the Vietnam War, especially on the internet. I only learnt of Project 68 recently. After reading one of Alan's letters, where Alan asked mum and dad if they had watched Project 68, I did not know what Project 68 was. So I went online and I found not only stories about Coral and Balmoral, but of the hell hole that they were. One thing that really... The Battle of Coral Balmoral, sung by Graham Roger. I'm sure some may have heard that. Then another song, 50,000 Australian Sons. The story of how the returning Vietnam War soldiers were treated on their arrival and then welcomed home again in 1987. A faint welcome home. I had never heard any of these songs before and now I have the album title, They Answered the Call. 
at the commissioning of this Vietnam War Memorial in Canberra in July 1992, then Prime Minister Keating said in part that Vietnam veterans were heroes and should be considered alongside other Anzacs and diggers. They did their duty. The war had cut deeply into the Australian soul and divided the nation to an extent unequalled since 1917. Divisions over Australia's role in Vietnam had created a burden for veterans who believed in and loved their country and extra pain for their families. Those that died gave their lives for Australia. My dad and our dad would have loved to have heard this, but he died of a heart attack in August 1978, 10 years after Alan's death. Dad was greatly affected by the Vietnam War and the young men that were killed earlier. The impact of Alan and William's death was a catalyst that after years of emotional pain, I feel that he also died of a broken heart over his loss. Then shortly after Alan's death, Mum told a reporter, only this was two weeks after his death, And I quote, Mum said that her son was very proud to be in the army. But she added, sadly, Alan wanted to do something with his life. He certainly did. On the 29th, oh sorry, on the 9th of November this year, my wife and I celebrate our 50th wedding anniversary and the loss of Alan lives on. Alan's place was taken in my wedding group by his army mate, Roy. Alan's birthday was on May 7th. He would have been 70 years old this year. In conclusion, I leave you with some words from the chorus of the song, The Battle of Coral Bell Moral, in honour of all who were there. We cared for our mates just like brothers and fought like Anzacs of old. We died and we bled for each other. And together we did ourselves proud at the Battle of Coral and Balmoral. To the 26 diggers who gave up their lives, your sacrifice won't be forgotten. And to all of the soldiers of 1 and 3 Ra, we did us proud at Coral and Balmoral. To all the soldiers who fought battles in Vietnam, your deed will live on in history. God bless you and thank you. Thank you, Gary, for your very moving reflection. I now invite Father John Tinkler, MBE, CSC, the Battalion Chaplain of the 1st Battalion of the Royal Australian Regiment during the Battle of Fire Support Base Coral, to lead us in a prayer of remembrance and the Lord's Prayer.
Ladies and gentlemen, those who have prepared this service and all those who have spoken today have been magnificently Australian. And because I have, could we please have three big Aussie cheers for all of those people. So hip hip. Hip hip. Hip hip. hip. Thank you very much to all of you. We appreciate that. In our prayer, Father, I thank you most sincerely for answering my prayers of yesterday and today that there be no rain during this service. So I do thank you most sincerely. And having granted me that, would you please make sure I don't become a whinger over these coal winds. Amen. Father, we have come here today to thank our mates who died for us and all Australians. Let us ask ourselves, who is my best friend? Would I be prepared to die for him or her? It is not easy to answer that. However, all the names we're remembering today have done just that for us. May we have a genuine love for each of them. We show them that by being here and by having this area dedicated in their name. May we each say a sincere thank you to them from time to time in our hearts. If we get a chance to do something nice for somebody in Australia or anywhere, let's do it as a thank you for our deceased mates. May we never forget the families of those whom we have remembered today when we hear of a mate suffering, may we hasten to his or her aid. Heavenly Father, we ask you to care for all members of the Australian De Defence Force as they offer their talents and time to ensuring we can live in peace in Australia. May Almighty God bless us all in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. It was Jesus who taught us the Our Father. He did it and he, like our veterans, gave his life for us. So let us be precious about saying together the Our Father. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and glory forever and ever. Amen. The last part I don't think we got from Jesus, but it's there. Thank you, Padre Tinks. Rees will now be laid by official representatives. The first Rees will be laid jointly by the Honourable Darren Chester MP, Minister for Veterans Affairs on behalf of the government, and the Honourable Amanda Rishworth MP, Shadow Minister for Veterans Affairs on behalf of the Federal Opposition. The next wreaths will be laid on behalf of all the next of kin of those killed in action during the Battle of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral by Miss Barbara Woodbine and Miss Chris Shana Clark. The next wreath will be laid on behalf of the men and women of the Australian Defence Force by Air Chief Marshal Mark Binskin AC, the Chief of Defence Force.
The next wreaths will be laid on behalf of the Royal Australian Navy, the Australian Army and the Royal Australian Air Force by Commodore Stephen Hughes, CSC, RAN, Lieutenant General Angus Campbell, AODSC, and Air Marshal Leo Davies, AOCSC. The next wreaths will be laid on behalf of the Royal Australian Regiment Association, the 1st Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, the 3rd Battalion, the Royal Australian Regiment, and the Royal Australian Engineers by Brigadier Stephen Dunn, AM, General Sir Philip Bennett, ACDSO, KBE, Colonel Mick Bindley, Major General Peter Phillips, AOMC, retired, and Brigadier David Rainwright, DSC. The next wreaths will be laid on behalf of A Squadron 3rd Cavalry Regiment, C Squadron 1st Armoured Regiment, the Royal Regiment of Australian Artillery and the Royal Australian Air Force Association by Colonel Bruce Richards, retired, Mr Bernie Sullivan, Brigadier Craig Farini, CSC and Group Captain Carl Schiller, CSC OAM, retired. The next wreaths will be laid on behalf of Legacy Australia, the Australian War Memorial, 
and the Naval Association of Australia by Mr Rick Craner, OAM, Rear Admiral Ken Doolan, AO, RAN retired, and Captain Victor Batiste, RAN retired. The final wreaths will be laid on behalf of the Vietnam Veterans Association of Australia, the Returned and Services League of Australia and the War Widows Guild of Australia by Mr Ken Foster, OAM, JP, Mr Robert Dick and Mrs Meg Green. It is now time to reflect and to silently remember all those who have served and died in war. Please stand for the ode, which will be followed by the last post, one minute silence and rouse. The ode will be recited by Warrant Officer Don Spinks OAM, the Regimental Sergeant Major of the Australian Army. They went with songs to the battle, they were young, straight of limb, true of eye, steady and aglow. They were staunch to the end against odds uncounted. They fell with their faces to the foe. They shall grow not old as we that are left grow old. Age shall not weary them, nor the years condemn. At the going down of the sun and in the morning, we will remember them. We will remember them.
Lest we forget. Lest we forget. Please remain standing for the Australian national anthem. I now invite Father John Tinkler to offer a final blessing. Good on you, Tim. Thank you, Mark. Holy Father, since I serve beside some of them myself, I do believe that for all those who died for us at both Coral and Balmoral, they had a special motive in heart and I pray and ask that we may be able to accept their motive, motto. And this is a motto I thought and believed they lived by. To have a mate, be a mate. A mate will always forgive and forget. A mate will never criticise you in public. A mate will always have time to listen to you. A mate is someone who would lay down his life for you as they did. The mates we pay tribute here today did lay down their lives for us, so we are asked that we be very comfortable, that they be very comfortably settled in heaven and that we are prepared to talk to them when we need help or guidance from above. And also that we may adopt their motto in life. And I'd like to just say a big thank you to Mark for the way he has emceed today and the band, they have been absolutely superb. Hip hip. Thank you all. Thank you, Tinks. We began our service today with the mounting of the catafalque party. And now the catafalque party will be dismounted. The Catafalque Party will be led away from the memorial by the regimental colours, standard, guidon and core banners of the units involved in the battle of fire support base Coral and Balmoral.
Please be seated. We will now commence with the public wreath laying. If you wish to lay a wreath, please wait until you're invited to move forward. When invited, please assemble in the central aisle where you will be ushered forward to lay your wreath at the memorial. Once you have laid your wreath or floral tribute, please take a short moment to reflect and then return to your seats. I now invite any veterans who served in the battles of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral and any related unit associations to come forward to lay their wreaths. I now invite widows and families of veterans of the Battle of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral to come forward and lay their wreaths or floral tributes. I now invite any current serving Defence Force personnel or unit representatives to come forward and lay their wreaths. I now invite members of other ex-service organisations to come forward and lay their wreaths.
And finally, any members of the public who wish to lay a wreath or floral tribute, to please come forward and lay their wreaths. Ladies and gentlemen, that concludes our commemorative service to mark the 50th anniversary of the Battle of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral. To our special guests today, the veterans of the Battle of Fire Support Base Coral and Balmoral and the next of kin of those servicemen killed in action, thank you for being with us for this morning's service. You honour us by your presence. You're wonderful representatives of all those who have served with you and we are so grateful for your service and sacrifice. And congratulations on the award of the unit citation for gallantry. Ladies and gentlemen, please show your appreciation. The transport shuttle to the National Convention Centre will commence from the opposite side of Anzac Parade, just behind you, from 12.30. The last post ceremony at the Australian War Memorial will commence this afternoon at 5 p.m. I would recommend for those who are wishing to attend that they arrive at the War Memorial no later than 4.30 p.m. To the mothers present here today, happy Mother's Day. Thank you and good afternoon. <laughs>